Hello there, happy Thanksgiving. This is Michelle with Michelle's Scrapbooking Thoughts and this is the project we're gonna be focusing on today. I hope you guys are eating lots of turkey and ham and all that good stuff. So I pre-recorded this, so by the time that you're seeing this, you're probably gathered with your family and celebrating Thanksgiving. So this is a cute album that I created. For you guys today it's called the horizontal matchbook holiday album that's what i'm calling it and it is absolutely adorable even if i say so myself the paper collection that i'm using is from recollections and it is the save freeze bonjour however i guess it's a uh, bonjour however is who created it from recollections and um it's an absolutely adorable collection. It's the Noel Christmas collection, actually. But it's got beautiful, beautiful papers in here. And there's two sheets of paper in here I cannot cut. I don't know what I'm going to do with it, but I know I'm not going to cut it. And it is, they are absolutely adorable. I, just, I saw them and I thought, I can't cut that. Look at that. I can't cut it. I, cannot, I just cannot bring myself to cut that. Could you guys cut that? <laughs> I don't know what I'm going to do with it. It may just stay in my stash. I'm not even sure, but... Oh my goodness, warm winter wishes. And that little smile, oh my goodness. Yeah, I'm not going to cut it. But I don't know what I'm going to do with it either. If you guys have any ideas of what I can do with that piece of paper without cutting it, please, please, please comment below. Something that I can do with it. Okay, so we're going to do a little quick walkthrough first. On the front, I created a pocket, and I just added some cute little cards. I got a drawing card back here. It says, uh, Happy Holidays, and it's got the little snowman. Super duper cute. Got a little pocket here to hold those. And I don't know if the camera will pick it up good, but of course I used my Wink of Stella all over the little coffee mugs. I don't know if it'll pick it up or not, but it's just, there it goes. It's just glistening and glitter. And I popped up this poinsettia. And then you open it up. It's a matchbook, but instead of going the, you know, usually the vertical way, it's going horizontally. So it opens up like this. And over here we have mini waterfalls. These are good for your two by three pictures. And you can fit, let's see, there's four. 8, 16 photos, or you can do 8 photos and 8 journaling, because I did cover the front and the back of these, and they tie with the ribbon closure. And then over here, I created these little pull-out tags, and they're double-sided, well not double-sided, because that's single-sided paper, but I just glued um, two pieces together to create a double-sided you know, mat for you. But if you have double-sided paper, you know, you'll only have to cut it once. But isn't that so cute? And then these are some old key card, let me see what they are, key tags that I had in my stash. And I thought, what could I do with those? And I thought, oh, bingo. So I just took the rings off. You can see them all in here. I just took the rings off and then I used my one-inch circle punch and just created, I just covered up with the one inch circle punch and created a cute little tab. So these fit in here. And these are just like the little treat bags that you can get anywhere. And they were in my stash too. And these are the four by nine, nine, let's see, nine and a half. And then what I did was I cut them in half, and I'm going to show you how I created the pages. I'm going to show you how I created these. You can get two out of one. So these just flip up, and like I say, you've got double the opportunity for photos here. And you can add as many pages as you wanted. I added six, I think. One, two, nope, only ordered, I only did five. And then they're held together by this ribbon closure. So, it's a really sweet album. I'm really impressed with it. 
I was inspired by a lot of it on Pinterest. I was just looking around and I wanted to create something a little bit larger than the regular matchbook albums. And I thought, hmm. So I just started looking and getting inspiration and this is what I came up with. So once it's laid out, it will measure almost 14 and a half inches long. Yeah, 14 and a half inches long. And then closed up, it is seven and a half by four and a half. So four and a half by seven and a half is what it is. So, and then there's the back. And then on the spine, you know me and my jingle bells, I added a little white tassel and a jingle bell with an, a white eyelet. Really sweet. I really, really, really like it. And my camera's about to fall. So, I'll, it's easy to make. And I'm going to walk it over with you. But I've cut a lot of the pieces ahead of time. Because it would just take forever to film absolutely everything. But when you're done, this just tucks inside to hold it together. So, we're going to put it aside. And the first thing we're going to work on is our sequin bags. I've got the rest of them already cut and ready to go. Three of them, four of them, and five of them. Now, of course, one of your ends is already open, but I'm going to take my trimmer or my scissors and I'm just going to cut that closed part off because we want two openings so we can get our um, picture photos in there. So I think I'm just going to do my scissors. And I'm just going to, I'm not going to cut the gray part off, but I am going to cut just underneath that gray part. I don't want to take a whole lot off. That's all I took off. Just a smidge. Just a little bitty piece that I took off. That's all. I just wanted to make sure that bottom opening was opened as well. And then I'm going to fold it in half. And I'm going to give it, actually, it will burnish it. I'm just going to give it a burnish. So that when I open it back up, I can see the score line. Now, I originally tried to cut this in my trimmer, and it did not work out so well. So, I'm just going to go right across that score line with a big pair of scissors. I wouldn't recommend a small pair. And I'm just going to cut it in half. Okay, so that creates our two ones. Our two ones. I guess I made that word. <laughs> the next thing you're going to need are six pieces of three by four and you're going to score them on the three inch side right down the middle at two. And so I've already got a lot of these pre-done just because we'd be here all night. But I'm going to show you how I created each element so you at least, you know, you'll know. Okay, so I've got one, two, three, four. I'm going to do this one with you. I should have a blank one in here. Well, I guess I don't. One, two, three, four, five. Oh, there it is. Okay. I'll wake up one day. And then the matting for these is going to be one and three eighths by three and seven eighths. And you'll want to do that to however many of these you're going to put in your album. So we're going to get this glued on. Now because I've been filming this late, it'll go up on for you today. You're actually going to be watching it on Thanksgiving Day. But I don't know if I will have had time to do the blog post. But sometime Thursday, sometime before I go to bed Thursday, Thanksgiving, I will do the blog post. It just may not be up with the video. But it will be there.
we've got all the ones here that we're going to use, and now we need to decide, you know, kind of the order that they're going to go in. So what we want to do is on the end down here. Now we want to put, I wouldn't recommend glue with cellophane. It typically doesn't work out well for me. Good for you, but I'm going to use tear and tape. I really want this to stay on, and I don't think the glue will hold as well. So I'm going to put three on either end. I should have done this ahead of time. That got a little wonky. All right, so we're just going to get this adhesive down into this cardstock. Now, what I like to do, or what I recommend, let's see, these are going to go down in here just like this. So you'll need to decide which one you want up. And I think I want this one up. So, what I would recommend is doing one at a time, because this is double-sided tape, and we all know once stuff gets stuck to this, it's stuck. So, I'm only going to do one side at a time, because if I do this other side and that cellophane gets over there, it's done for. Okay. Now, you want to put these right up against that score line, but not over the score line. Otherwise, it won't bend. And I'm just going to center it as best I can and then lay that down. Once that is down, then come over to the top side. And then all you have to do, and I usually like to hold that down, and then fold that over. And give it a nice burnish down. And you're going to do that to all five of them. I meant to have all these done. But I had to go down and fix mom something to eat. And then I baked two pecan pies. Get everything ready. This really is simple to make, and it's fun. Okay. So again, with the gray down below, I'm just going to put it right up against that score line and drop it down. Oops. Now, with the uh, waterfall, if you wanted to, you could create something else on that side, or you could just leave it plain. But I didn't want to leave it plain. I felt like that was a lot of missed out opportunity for more photos to fit in. So that's why I wanted to add that in there. All right, I'm going to do one more with you, and then I think you're going to pretty much know how this works. And that way you won't have to sit here and watch me do all these. But I'll show you how it works. Because it has a ribbon closure, so you can, it's easy to untie it and add more or take out. So let's see. 
wanted to do. I used, the bag on here says they have let it snow. So I went let it snow and then the other side was just plain and then back to let it snow. So you can use any cellophane bags. I believe these came from Michael's. Put that on the wrong side. Boy, oh boy, oh boy, don't stick. I didn't get that one too straight. Let me see if it'll let me tear it up. Well, I'm just going to go with it. I only get that one opportunity to get it right. <sighs> All right. Now I'll do the other three for photos. So basically you have, oh, I didn't, what didn't I do? I just got it off course. Okay, well, I don't like that one. So we're going to do this again because that one's all wonky. And then your waterfalls are going to be, you're going to need to cut eight of those. Let me see. Two by three, I believe. Let me look at my notes. Yes, eight of those at two by three and scored at half an inch. All right. Let's try this one more time. Went to Michael's the other day and they had their 40% off sale on all scrapbooking supplies. So, I got a lot of paper packs. Okay, so once you have all of these done, like so, we're just going to do this and this for now. We'll need to get our ruler and this measures across the top 4 inches. So, I'm going to come in about a quarter of an inch up and I'm going to come in at one where's my pen I'm going to come in at one and make a little dot and three and make a little dot and those are going to be where my holes are going to go so then I'm going to come in with a crocodile and I'm going to use the bigger hole punch and I'm just going to cut out holes where those were. And then now I've got a pattern. So I'm just going to make a mark and cut or punch. Got 
those and I'll make one more with y'all. And then we'll give these a punch. Little bits get stuck in there. So say we have all five of them done. Okay, we've got them all in there. Now what you're going to need are two pieces of cardstock, whatever color you're going to use. I'm just going to use white because it really goes good with this collection. And you're going to need, the first piece needs to be four and a half by ten and a quarter. And we're going to score this at one, just one side. One, and one and three quarters. Then your second piece is going to be four and a half by seven and three quarters. going to score this one at one one and a half inches just on one side yeah. all right we're going to fold and burnish on these score lines This is going to create your spine. So once it's glued down here, like this, then this folds over and this becomes your matchbox. that the glue always wants to act up on camera. We don't want to cross over that score line. We just want to butt right up against it. And that's going to create your spine. That is. And that's going to create your spine. So 
what you want to do is you want to come in and you want to create, because these are going to sit in here. So you want your holes to also be on the outside. So I just came in and just eyeballed it from side to side. I did not get the ruler. I just made a dot. And you know what? Before I do that, I need to get this piece on here. Otherwise, I'm going to have to do it twice. So this front piece right here. It's seven eighths by four and three eighths. Seven eighths by four and three eighths. So let's cut something here. Let's uh, let's cut this piece. So, seven eighths. Four and three eighths. And so that's going to be your mat for this piece right here. Then we'll come in with our hole punch. Okay, and then this piece right here, I'm added, and it is five eighths by four and three eighths. We'll do it in another pattern. Let's see. So five eighths. And that piece will go right there. Now, if you wanted to do this in designer paper, then you wouldn't have to do all this matting. But I like paper and glue, so cardstock and matting it is. <laughs> okay, now I'm going to bring back in the pattern. Now I'm going to do my holes. Just gonna mark it. Okay. So then these would come in. Where's this other one? And they would fit in here, right up against, right here. This is where they're going to sit. But before we do that, we want to go ahead and map this piece right here. So this piece this piece needs to be, it's four and a half, so we need to come in at four and three eighths by six and seven eighths. So four and three eighths and six and seven eighths. Four and three eighths. And six and seven eighths. Did I say six and seven eighths? Yep. Six and seven eighths. I thought about pre cutting all this, but I thought, you know what, I'll just do it all together. And we're going to map that right there. So 
sometimes I like to do what's called free art, where I have no plan in place. With this one, I knew exactly what papers were going where and everything. With this one, with y'all, I'm just what I like to call free art, where I'm just doing it as I'm doing it, or choosing it as I'm doing it. And that's crooked. That is crooked, crooked. See, that's a good thing about glue. We can add more. All right. Much better. You are going to need a total of about 25 inches of ribbon. Well, not for the first one. That's for the second one. For the first ribbon closure, I'm going to say about 16 inches. It's 25 for the waterfall closure. So then what you're going to do is you essentially decide how these are going to go in. And then you're just going to run... Start from the back. And then you just start adding them on. And you would do this for however many pages you want to add. To make the video short, if I think I'm already getting along. I'm just going to do the three just to show you how it's done. Because I know I'm a visual learner. I have to see it. Okay, so once those are together, then you're going to take the ribbon and feed it through the front of the album. And they'll just tie up like a shoelace. It'll just tighten everything up. Just tighten everything up. And then you're just going to tie it down. Now I didn't tie a knot in mine. Most, a lot of people ask me if I do that. I rarely tie knots. Because if I ever wanted to get back into it, I don't want to have to mess with that knot. So then, I would just... Trim off my ends. Get them a little even. Oops. And then that's that. So you would just, you know, you would keep adding whatever you wanted to add. Now your photo mats are going to be... They're going to be three and a half by five and a half. And like I said, if you have double-sided paper... You only have to cut once. But with this paper collection, it was single-sided, so I had to take two and glue them together. So, I have them over here somewhere. So, I just cut, cut a bunch of three and a half by five and a half. And I already glued some together, all five of them, actually. So, you know, you would just decide where... You know what order you wanted to place them but if you have single-sided of course like I do I just glued two together and that way you have one on the front and one on the back so you would just do all those and then as far as the tabs for your pages the little key ones I call them key key tabs you would just Take one of them out, and then get it off this little thing. And then I took a one inch hole punch that I have. And don't worry, I've got the link for this one if you're interested in getting it. It'll be in the shop the video. And then I just took a little glue and I covered up that hole. I didn't want that hole there. 
and I just glue that down and then also did the back but I did the back and I, I didn't do them the same I don't believe I did them the same no I did them different because the paper collection all matches so it you know I wanted them to be different when I use a paper collection I want to be able to show people all the different kinds of papers that are in the collection I want it to be seen so I didn't do them the same so we'll come in with Oh my goodness, isn't he so cute? I love snowmen. They're just so cute. So then I would come in and I would start at the front. And then I would just add a little bit of glue down here at the bottom. You don't want to glue the whole thing. You just want to glue the tab. And then I started at the far end because I wanted to stagger them. I wanted the pages to stagger. Just get him in place and hold him down, and he'll stay. And then the, the rest of them, you'll just, I started up here at the top, and then I went just a little bit down with the next one, and a little bit down with the third one, and then so on and so forth, just to stagger them. Okay, so we need to do the spine over here, and we need to do this backing. The spine... My notes are everywhere. The spine is one and three eighths by four and three eighths. So, what do we want our spine to be? That is the question. We could do that. That's kind of pretty. that there. And then this piece over here, anytime you're doing mats, you know, you're just going to take the actual measurement, which this one is Right at six and a quarter, so I'm going to go down to six and an eighth. I just want a slight border, you know, a slight white border. So this is going to be uh, six and a quarter by three and three eighths, I think. So three and three eighths by six and a quarter. little bit short. Oh, me, oh, me, oh, my. Let's see. Let me use this one. That's not right either. Oh my goodness. Alright, let's measure this again. So four and three eighths. Four and three eighths by six and an eighth. 
four and three, so that's six and eight. Oh my goodness. Mm, that one's too short too. wasn't a good idea for me to do free art. Because I think it takes longer. It takes me longer. This, for this, usually when I come in, I have everything pre-cut. It's easier. It doesn't take as long. So maybe I need to go back to doing that. So this is where the waterfall is going to come in, and I did cut out all of these. Now, you're going to need, because there's four here, so you're going to need a total of eight two-by-threes, and then along the two-inch side, score it at a half-inch. Or actually, it's going to be along the three-inch side, cut it a half-inch. And then you're going to fold them all over, and then what you're going to do is just put some glue on the tab and then you want to come in just a little smidge down from the top leaving just a little bit of border okay so we're going to give that a good burnish next thing you want, put the next one on now when you go to put this one on you want to make sure that it's bent and you want to butt it up right under the one that you just did. You just want to butt it up there. And I usually like to flip this down to make sure they're straight and going in the, the line. You don't want them off. So I'm just going to keep putting them on. Making sure they're straight and gluing them down. I just didn't want this whole side over here just to be plain. Even if you added one picture, I just felt like it was a, a wasted opportunity. You know, to, how could I incorporate more pictures in this album? And this is what I came up with. Okay, so we've got our four there. Because I think, to me, when you're creating an album, you know, you want to get as many pictures in one as you can. Okay, so we're just going to come over a little bit. And that's crooked, I can already see. Especially if it's an event that you know there's going to be a lot of photos taken. I see that one's crooked. And then the last one, like I said, is two by three. I should have done this with you guys in the beginning. And then you're going to score it on the three inch side at a half inch. And that's going to create your little tab. So I did the last one. Okay, so these are all down. Now, you can see my dilemma after I made this, and I thought, okay, even once I get paper on here, and even once you get pictures on here, these are not going to lay flat, and this would bug me, bug me, bug me, bug me. So, that's why I decided to come in with the ribbon closure, and I'm going to show you how I did that. 
Let's get these covered first. You're going to need the mats to these are 1 and 7 eighths by 2 and 3 eighths. Now, I like to cover the front and the back. But, you know, by all means, if you want to just cover the front and leave the underside blank, you know, you do what you like. And then, you know, I just came in and matched up the papers. I also, in this one, I also added the strips here. I don't like these to be blank, but like I said, you do what you like. It's just like I cannot leave cardstock blank. I have to put paper on it. I've always been that way. And with this one, I just ran out of time cutting strips. And this is actually washi tape. So, if you don't want to cut all these baby strips, you can just use the thin washi tape. It's not as thick as some of the others. So, that's what I'm going to do with this one here, too. So, I just went in my stash and got some washi tape. And I just left a little bit of border on the side like I normally would with the paper. And then you can just run it down. And, of course, if you don't get it in the spot you want to, you can just pick it right back up. And then I left just a little bit of space of water. And that's how I use the washi tape. But, by all means, you know, cut the strips. I did cut the strips on some, too. So then, you know, you would just randomly go through here and you recover all of your mats you know however you want to do it front and back front and back and then if you wanted to do the spines the spines if you want to do cardstock I mean paper mats they are 3 8 by 7 8 So, like I said, you could do, like I did over here, this is paper. This is paper. This whole one is paper. And then I use some of the washi tape on this side. Once I found out that that actually worked. Okay, so let's do the cover. Now, on this particular one down here, this last one down here, I did not add washi tape or the strips. What I did, that's where I put my ribbon that goes on this side. Now, this is the ribbon that you're going to need that needs to be a total of 25 inches. So, and then 7 is 25. So, for this one, you just want to get it, fold it in half, and get it as even as possible. And then cut it in half. And I went ahead and got some double sided tape and put it right here. And then this is where I added the first ribbon right here. So that's going to be the one side that comes over. Now to create this side, we're going to turn it over. And we're going to put a piece of, I'm trying to match it up. Tear and take right there. And then we're going to add our second strip. And then what I like what I like to do is add another piece on top so that my designer paper will stick really well. So, I'm gonna just, so now we need a piece over here. It's gonna be six.
four and three eighths by six. Four and three eighths by six. I don't know if this will fit. I know. I couldn't be that lucky, y'all. I could not be that lucky. not be any luckier. Let's see. So four and three eighths. By six and an eighth. So that's going to go there. This is really a fun album to make, especially if you've got, you know, a collection that has so many pieces to go with it. The collection has all kinds of stuff that you can use to decorate. All right, so therefore, this will now close up your waterfall. And so it will keep them down. Plus, when you go to put fold this one over into your matchbox mechanism, it won't, you know, bend these up. So you're going to have more ribbon, but I'd rather have more than not enough. And that way you can trim you know, the excess off, because that's too long, but you, you know, you can trim the excess off. So once you have that done, you know, these flip over, and then this essentially tucks in here. Get that out of there. So this will tuck in to the front here like that and it will hold it together and then you could decorate your front and then of course your spine and then also you want to decorate your back now when it came time to now this is optional not something that you know if you like it do it if you don't but let me show you if you do want to do it I just use one of the bigger eyelets I use some um, not washi tape um, twine and then I added a little tassel and a bell and then tied it on there now, this might bother you. It doesn't bother me. But if you did, you know, you can add a sticker up there. And that's it, guys. I mean, it's really a simple album. And like I said, if you've got a lot of stuff that you can, you know, different collection pieces in, a, in, a, in, a, in an album collection of paper, then, you know, the sky's the limit. You can use all the paper and just show all the different sides to the paper. That's why I like to do, um, I do, I don't do a lot of just paper designs. I really like the idea of gluing the paper onto the cardstock and because I just like paper and glue. So <laughs> that's what I like to do. Well, it's getting late and I don't want to keep anybody because I know the family's over if you're getting to be able to watch this today. But I did want to share this with you. If you had some downtime during cooking, that maybe this is something that you might want to make. And I hope you guys have a great Thanksgiving, and I'll see you back here next time. Thanks.